So we talk a lot about definitions when it comes to asexuality, particularly the definition of asexuality itself. And I think we have these conversations because asexuality is a really complicated sexual orientation. But one thing we don't really talk about a lot in that conversation is what is sexual orientation? So let's talk about it. So let's start by defining sexual orientation. So sexual orientation is the innate and enduring pattern of sexual attraction that one has throughout their life. It also describes the gender or genders that someone is sexually attracted to, and it describes the identity one builds around this enduring pattern of sexual attraction over the course of someone's life. So sexual orientation is this big picture view of how you, as an individual, experience sexual attraction. So if you're watching this video, this relationship is probably something that you have spent a lot of time thinking about. And some definitions of sexual orientation loop in other things like emotional attraction or romantic attraction. And that is primarily because I think for most people, sexual attraction, romantic attraction, those things are linked and they come together. So for most people, your attraction as a whole uh, feels sort of uniform. Asexual people understand that those things are separate. And so for the purposes of our conversation, we're just going to be talking about sexual orientation as your pattern of sexual attraction. We're not including the other kinds of attraction. Sexual orientation is innate. So look, our sexual orientation, regardless of how we end up identifying, is an innate thing. It's not a one-off. It's not something we choose. It's not something that just happens to us. It is part of how we are constructed, part of how we're built. Uh, you can think of sexual orientation as like factory settings, now, there may be a lot of academic conversations about whether or not that is totally true, uh, that it is fundamental to who you are, that it is innate. But I think for most people, the experience, the lived experience of sexual orientation is that it feels like an innate, original part of us. So that's how we're going to talk about it. It is not imposed on us by others. It is not a result of our behaviors. Sexual orientation is innate. Sexual orientation is a pattern of experience. So sexual orientation is also not something that is a one-off. It is not the result of a single experience or a single moment in time. It isn't determined by any single point on your timeline. Instead, sexual orientation is the result of many experiences, many points in time. It's a result of an, an accumulated bit of your lived experience. And really in sexual orientation, when we're thinking about it, we're looking for patterns. We're looking for experiences, feelings that repeat over time. Now, these patterns don't have to be consistent forever. The patterns can change over time. But what's important when you're thinking about sexual orientation is that the patterns do exist. Within your life and within your lived experiences, there are patterns that you can point to, patterns that you can see about how you experience or don't experience sexual attraction. Sexual orientation is about patterns. Sexual orientation is connected to gender. So the final big piece there is that sexual orientation is connected to the gender or genders of the people that we are attracted to. So sexual orientation considers the directionality of our sexual attraction. You know, what kind of person or what person are we feeling or not feeling sexual attraction to? Um, is it one gender that we are sexually attracted to? Is it multiple genders that we are sexually attracted to? Are we sexually attracted to no genders whatsoever? Uh, gender ends up playing a really important role in how we define sexual orientation and how we think about sexual orientation. 
So because sexual orientation is something innate to us and is something that represents a pattern of experience over our whole lives or a portion of our lives, it makes a lot of sense that sexual orientation would play an important part in our identity construction. It makes sense that sexual orientation would be an important part of how we understand who we are. And beyond just being a description of our patterns of experiences around sexual attraction, sexual orientation, depending on where we fall across all of the spectrums, also determines how we are going to interact with culture and how culture is going to influence our identity construction. You know, if you're lucky enough to be one of the sexual orientations that is supported by the mainstream culture, basically heterosexuality, uh, you are going to have really positive experiences with culture, particularly the dominant messages of culture. You're going to fit in. You're going to feel like uh, the culture is built for your experience and it's affirmed by e the culture around you. If not, if you are any of the sexual orientations that are not supported by the mainstream culture, um, homosexuality, bisexuality, pansexuality, the entire asexuality spectrum, you're going to have a very different experience. Your identity construction is going to be a little bit harder because you're not going to have the support and affirmation of the mainstream culture. And it's important for us to understand that that role that sexual orientation plays in our overall identity construction. We sort of have no choice but to brush up against the world in that way. Uh, so recognizing what role that plays in how we conceive of who we are and how we construct the notion of who we are is really important. Now, of course, there's a whole lot more here to discuss about what attraction is and all of the different specifics of sexual orientation, but that's really beyond the scope of this really quick introduction. Remember, the things that are important to understand about what makes sexual orientation sexual orientation, uh, it is describing a pattern of sexual attraction over time. It is describing something that is innate to who you are, and it's describing the gender or genders of the people that you are feeling sexual attraction for, or not feeling sexual attraction for if you're on the asexual spectrum. It is also an important part of our identity construction and sexual orientation plays a big part in us figuring out who we are. There is, of course, a whole lot more to explore down the road of sexual orientation, but uh, for our purposes, to simply define it and get an understanding of what it is, this is the start.